and talk a bit about... Sorry? Satinda Paul. Paul. Okay. Handing over. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Hi. I'm Paul from Munich. Cruise code on widgets. Okay. The main aim for my presentation is the linting that to be reached at test bench level. There are many talks about linting at RTL level, and there are many papers and tools. So let's not dig into that. The main focus is verification guys think that they are smart and they can verify all the RTL smartly. But they often ignore their mistakes. So the main goal of this presentation is how we can make sure that the goal towards shift that it's achievable with issues in test bench finding early in the design cycle flow. Okay. Now the question is, why do we really care about linting of test benches? What we really achieve in that? If you see the design cycle, we have, if you find bug in design early, it's 1x approach. But if you go development side, it may reach to 6.5 times. But if you go on to the integration with the complete SOC level, it reached to 15x timing for development. And once it's go to client in the field, then the cost is too much. So make sure that to reduce more left and finding more issue on the test pen side. It's good to use system value log. I also love that. I'm also one of the system value log creator. But system value log has a lot of opportunities to fail also, which normally RTL guys think, but education guys don't even care for that. And these ample opportunity, we took two opportunities to where we go wrong. And basically, what is shift left? It's a safe time and cost. Now the here is. In my opinion, what I saw in my experience also, once you create the test bench and once you go for the full verification cycle, it's a very hard fight between the RTL guys and verification guys to make sure where the issue really is. A verification guy feel very happy to find bug in RTL. Good, that is their job. Done. But what if the issue in test bench? Who will pay for them? Ultimately, it's costing the design cycle time heavily. And I see many ASICs got delayed just because because only of the bug in the coverage second and bug in the verification test benches. So this main goal is to, of this pipeline is to make sure to catch early in the flow. We have ample of opportunities in the verification like system value of test bench. And anything can go wrong, can really go wrong in a bigger uh, old parameter flow. And also on top of that, we have UVM now. It's good that we have the user macros, but there are many ifs and buts in the UVM flow also which sometimes verification guys ignore. And EDA companies are still not, and their simulators are still not mature to get all the keywords of UVM. There are many stuff which are, let's say, technically correct in UVM, but logically make no sense in verification, and then can cause you redundant error in test bench. So we also capture two issues in that, and I will show that. And assertions, assertions could be like formal and theorem proving and property checking. There could be many opportunities in which we can restrict them by just using small linting only. That we can discuss and while acceleration with the VIPs and all, many emulators have the specific configuration for the VIPs. So it's not easy to map those first in right? But if you know their goals and know your, let's say, how you lint them, then you can restrict them and basically try to reduce your time and especially also from the formal theorem proving side. You can do a lot of linting in that case. We have the case studies also for that. Okay. Basically, it's a uh, new paradigm with the old concept of RTL linting. We got some lot of rule set from Spaglas and also a tool called Violator. We try to make sure that whatever meaningful for verification, we try to convey that only. See in the cartoon on the left side, look for the guy who maintain your code and psychopath and can kill you easily, so think, think in that variable. So we used a approach called uh, PySlint, which is Python-based and based on Slang. On top, it can have a system value of features, which can all are open source, and we are all on GitHub. This is our approach. If you see on the left side, it's a simple uh, value of PLI approach, which constructor and some face values. And then you can uh, customize with case studies, whatever we have. And the main thing is, we are, first of all, let me clear you, we are not an EDA tool now. No. We're just adding a cherry on the cake of the EDA to make sure we, whatever we use in test bench, it's clearly approachable. And we help really customer to write their own rules, basically. We have some customer which have the property for the telecom chips and some required for the data center chips. So we can create the rules, we can customize them, and we can also use them, whatever. 
And it's not, but we have an open rule for innovation. We are happy to collaborate with the people, and that's it. Before going into the very, let's say, high level, this is the kind of a small approach where it can be effective. For qualitative approach, like we have the naming style in the test plan. Sometimes people confuse with the naming style itself and then get cause major issues also later in the flow. Let's say for their classes, for drivers, for you know, UVM, and also for the functional naming time. And how do we reuse the test bench from the VIPs? So make sure we follow them. And for the quantitative approach, this is we are working hard on them. Let's say SVA density. Let's say you have a telecom chip, you don't have all the clocks active at all time. So make sure to achieve that in test bench linting itself to not the, uh, activate all the clocks. And for the data center chips, you don't have service active all time for all. So that you can kind of customize that. And the good part is functional coverage density. Let's say you can control the bins easily using the linting itself so that you will not go for an extreme coverage cycle that can cause the simulator runtime. Okay. This is the case study for DPI check. DPI is a very old style check. It people use heavily. I also you love that. But there are many things which are kind of depreciated. Of course, your simulator will approve that, but there is no point using them in later in the flow. Let's say this DPIC approach, it's completely discarded. It's people tend to reuse a lot of old codes from the old chips that has these functionality. So if, if you try to run Python, within two seconds it will tell you that please don't use that, and it will save your time there itself. Okay, now the classic state, state uh, let's say, fight of C and Verilog interface. C normally uh, have two state available, but system Verilog has a very bad habit of using as a logic, which is four state approach. Take an example on, on, let's say, see the code on the right side. It shows that your uh, C value has a kind of a address and then output data. The main mistake we did is here output is declared as a logic side and which can be taken as, as X or Z also. If you see the core output, your C side, it shows as X16, which is perfect fine. But on the system Verilog side, it's showing as a ZZ. You can spend hours of uh, arguing with the RTL guy, but it's an issue in the test bench itself. But with the SY lint, avoid you, and uh, you can easily catch them, and it's simple to use that. The main message is you can easily mess up the system Verilog, but try to kind of uh, stick into the constraint flow. These are the sample rule sets we have for the class prefix you can do, and if you have a cover group you can do, and also the ASM prefix and covers prefix. This all comes from basically verification team uh, leader side, but we can try to add more on random that. And also for the SVA, we have, let's say, missing labels, and also the uh, no pass and missing fail uh, bound range. And the class method, let's say, which are can be not external, and end label and missing casting for the UVM side. And below, if you see down table, there are some UVM linting rules that what these are, let's say, very hard to find when you go deep into the verification, but you can easily find in the initial coding itself and that can reduce your coding time, basically. Let's say a driver should have request parameter overridden. These are very hard to find later in the flow because all these are going to into the SU mode only and agent is active before, like for reuse all this stuff because UVM parser will simply ignore them and that can cause more trouble. This is uh, synopsis cadence both has to learn, but nobody has learned so far. And UVM agent is active. It's, I mean, technically it's correct, but UVM parser, you will parse that, but what you will do with that, what you will achieve with that, the question is that. And you can again have to do redundant cycle for that. And also for the missing very very virtual interface for the VIPs, that simply people ignore and then find later the issues. Here you see the example case studies is actively declared. If you see, if it's uh, not allowed from UVM point of view also, but simulators will try to allow it. So our Python can easily catch in two seconds itself. Any question for this? Because I know UVM makes not people happy. And this is the classic system while look case issue. We use, tend to use and colon equal to operator, which basically assigned a weight to all the ranges. Here you see the ranges from to up to all 65,000 kg. It will end billions of cycles for no reasons kind of thing. So we have to make sure whatever range you want, you really want to have that only. 
it's good to find let it's my opinion is good to have zero five a and that's it not more than that if you go for beyond that it will end up in more trouble rather than solving trouble here you can see all these operators we can easily catch and also our recommendation would work to use it is basically kind of a very constrained random approach early in the verification and this is how the end we generate the reports for managers and super managers they will love that and they see the productivity of their team okay this is a very uh, now summary this is a very new frontier and we saw many clients coming up and help asking us for more help and asking us to create more custom rule so feel free to happy and happy to collaborate that's it I'll keep it simple, stupid. We'll have to go back and forth with this. Um, this is an interesting concept, I think, linting the test bench. Is it? I've never done it. I've never even thought about doing it. Sorry? Now you, now, now you will do. Now we'll do it. Okay. Has anyone else done this? Run checkers on your like test bench code? C plus plus. C plus plus code. Oh, lint. You lint your C plus plus code. Fair enough. Yeah. The RTL guy, which is not correct all time. I mean, if you have issue in the let's say bug, you always complain the RTL guy, yeah. which is not true all all oh, time. That's a good point. Yeah, test bench doesn't work. Can't be the verification engineer's fault, right? <laughs> Never. The guy has to destroy things, not to create things. The verification guy is only yeah. You're trying to kick the design and check it doesn't work. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, I think this is good. All right. Questions. Questions from the floor. Olaf. So generally, what 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 is the quality of, of of test benches? Do you find a lot of when when you start doing this? Do you find a lot of problems with test benches? Sorry, Paul. Paul. Because uh, let's say we have one client which is very known for social media, and the, for their chip, I mean, we tried that. They tend to have many kind of a VIPs coming from different vendors, and that VIP is cust not customized to that SOC. So that kind of linting you can easily find. I hope you got the name already of client. I have a question while I go up there. Um, you, you're an EDA startup, I guess. Yes. You're you're a, like consulting EDA startup. This Pi S lint. We are not EDA, let me tell you. We are not EDA company. Okay, okay. Pi S lint, is that like a tool that you guys It's have a kind written? of a Python based wrapper on the existing linter. Okay. It's a freeware. Yeah, we are, we are creating kind of a customized tools for that, and customized code, and then, and then on top. What's the, the question is what's the opinion on the quality of Pi slang? I mean, we are still making it, and it, we just started with one year ago, so keep on changing but yes we able to identify issues at least and we are also growing even in the synopsis guidance also has many issues so far as i said uvm i mean so far i hardly saw tool guys to understand uvm completely Te technically they are correct but logically they don't look do you do you yes yes system will parser yeah uh, we're back to the verilog parsers okay yeah um <laughs> So my question is, do you think this will become more common in the kind of verification flow or supported by the EDA yes, tools? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. okay. And, that, and also we are seeing good benefits of using with System C also with the test bench. System C as well, you link system, system C. also C. because the thing is, and the way we talk System C and HLS together, yeah. that is kind of a much shift left. Yeah. Shift left, like in time scale. Yeah, yes. I only heard this concept recently, the shift left thing. I saw, I mean, I learned this concept in 2004, but really now I got mainstream. Yeah, yeah. Um, cool, all right, I like it. Makes sense, makes sense. If you're sitting there debugging the design when the bug was in the, ver the test bench all along, then... Because the problem is if you have a bug in test bench, the bug is already fully fixed through an RTL. Mm. You can't find it, and there is yeah. no scope. And even if the function coverage is wrong, it is wrong. Yeah, cool. All right. Any other questions for Paul? No, that's it. Thank you very much, Paul. Appreciate it. Thank you. Break. Coffee break. Right?